Hey friends, so it's the morning after selling the trailer. Uh, the fifth wheel is out of our lives and it's time for the flatbed to evolve. So I don't know if this is a travel vlog, a homestead vlog, or a <laughs> an appendix or addendum to the flatbed videos. What we are going to do is install some 72 inch Lund uh, diamond plate toolboxes we picked up uh, from Home Depot online. And this is gonna help us do a couple of things. It's gonna give us some secure storage on the back of the truck now that we don't have to worry about the fifth wheel clearing anything. And additionally, it is going to make up the lost space that we no longer have from getting rid of the fifth wheel. The fifth wheel had much more storage than our bumper pull. The bumper pull has more living space, less storage. So it was, this is a trade off, but in the end, I think this is probably uh, gonna be better for us. And now we just have to learn to make do with uh, less storage and our toolboxes are gonna help us overcome that. Here, we're at the point where I have to make some decisions about how I wanna mount it. This is gonna be our propane storage. We have a tank here that we've had back here and then we have a second tank. So I'm gonna add some of those loops to the other side. We'll put a propane tank here as well. I think what I'm gonna do, if you look here, there's a stake pocket here, then the stake pocket here. So I think I'm going to set that back far enough to get a stake in there. That way I can come around the back with um, like a low, just wooden set of low wooden stake sides to hold stuff in. To elevate it up off of the bed, if you see on the back there, right there, I used a piece of synthetic decking to elevate that Protect toolbox up off of the bed in an effort to try to preserve the powder coat. Because when we're done traveling, I'd like to return this to more of like a farm truck and I'll probably remove the toolboxes and keep them for later use or sell them depending on what. But like right now, this kind of feels like, kind of feels like a service bed, quite honestly, which isn't, which isn't really how I had anticipated it turning out but I think it's gonna be really sharp. Hey guys, so we are going to be making some steak sides for the back of the truck. I bought some cheap lumber from Lowe's currently in the process of making some dados in the wood, which is a challenge not having a table saw, but uh, alas, we will do what we can and get these thrown together. Thank you, James. Look at that. Could not have had a better teacher. That is with a <laughs> cordless battery powered skill saw and an $18 cobalt chisel from the Lowe's. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's day two of the steak side steak end build. So I think I totally overcomplicated it with the, uh, with the dados and stuff, so. I'm gonna try to resurrect this thing and make it super simple. But right now I'm just, I'm looking to see if I have enough material left over from my, my course change to see if we can uh, continue to do this in a way that makes sense and will meet our needs 
in the end. So let's do this to this. So here we have this side, despite my best efforts to screw it up, it managed to work. And then we have this guy over here. Now I just need to cut and place the back one and we'll be good. So here's the finished. Steak ends, it's not on the side, steak side ends, I guess. So, this is one piece. It lifts out. Got frosty, so I'll have to put it in overnight before I can finish it with Danish oil. So what happens when you have to cut your miters by hand with a $10 pull saw from Lowe's, but you know, all in all, looks pretty good. Just gotta figure out a way to Join them together, thinking a long, long pin with a clip over the top. There you have it.